Welcome to the Trolling BA Show. I'm your host, Felicia Ann Rose, a new ha, aka the trillest MBA you will ever know. And I'm here to help you survive and thrive in corporate America by giving you the truth and being as real as only I can be. Happy Sunday, everybody. Welcome back to the show. Uh, I wanted to take a little time to just level set and explain some things. I know I was off for like two weeks and then we came back with episodes I recorded before uh, transitioning um, and moving to L.A., Not that I've officially moved to L.A. I'll be back in Texas at the end of November, but um, I've come out here um, to create a new life for myself, I think. I'm not sure. You know, this is a lot, (laughs) to be honest. There's a lot of change going on. So let me let me go back in case this is the first episode you're ever listening to. This is what we call a fair update. So this isn't a regular episode. This is just me coming to you guys with some learnings that I'm experiencing in my own career journey. Just so you know a little bit about me, if you are new or if you don't know or wondering, I'm still in this corporate journey with you guys. So By day, I am a marketing executive for a global Fortune 500 company. Um, We don't talk uh, too much about that on the show because I would like to keep my job (laughs) for now, for now. And (laughs) I have struggled, which is the reason why I started doing the show. I struggled being the person that I wanted to be and becoming the executive that I wanted to become. And I continue to struggle. Oh my God, continue to struggle, especially as I move from individual contributor to people manager and people leader. And for as mature as I think I am, I'm not. I'm not mature at all. (laughs) I'm human. One of the lessons I wanted to share with you guys that's been happening for me, you know, learning how to be a people manager. And I had an amazing manager when I first started, the woman who hired me. I'm going to have her on the show. She has now left the organization I work for. She is absolutely brilliant. She is amazing. She is a Black woman. There are a number of people who are marketers that I've worked with, two of them I've had on the show, and they are phenomenal at what they do and the value they add to the organizations they work for. So one, and we'll have him back because he's just a wealth of knowledge, but Michael Pittman, he is amazing. I'll put a link to the show that he did with me about managing, you know, your relationships and navigating your career and him being a people manager. He's a phenomenal people manager. I've learned so much from him. Haven't executed it all very well. Uh, (laughs) Still trying to get there, (laughs) but learned a lot. The other person is Tia Cummings uh, Hopkins now. Tia's married, but Tia is phenomenal. She is just a brilliant mind. And she's one of the most beastly marketers I've ever worked with. And I've had the opportunity to work with her twice, but she is a brain, but not only a brain, but then she's also beautiful, which isn't fair. (laughs) You're not supposed to get everything. She got it all. She got the brain. She got the beauty. She got the heart. She's just a salt of the earth human being, and she is beastly at what she does. And so how she manages her career is just a testament of her prowess and acumen. And so 
those two, along with my previous manager, Brianna Jones, those three together, like if I could hire them, I can't afford them, but if I could hire them, um, when I'm able to hire them, I will. (laughs) And I'll give them teams of people to go execute whatever their brain says to do to make money for us, (laughs) Um, because that's how good they are. And I've learned so much from each of them. I'm so grateful that they are in my life. But when you are surrounded by those types of people in your network, you realize that you have a lot to learn, especially when it comes to the softer skills that propel your career at higher levels. And I've been very, very fortunate to be under the tutelage of such people trying to figure out the right way to become the executive that I'm striving to be. It is hard. Even when you have like these great people that I just shouted out, I think what's hard for me is then comparison comes in because I am not that. And when I say that, I am not the polish that I see that succeeds in corporate. I don't know about y'all, but I see a lot of times, especially when there's a Black woman leader, it feels like there's a theme or thread about how those people show up. I think that's one reason why people got really excited about Bozema St. John because she was outside of that box of what Black senior leader women were looking like. You know, oftentimes we saw Black senior leader women very poised, very put together. There's a lot of hair swoops, (laughs) as I call them, a lot of weave and wigs going on up until just recently. I, I would say in the past maybe five to 10 years are we seeing Black senior leader women wearing their hair differently. So locks, full locks, braids, um, protective styles, those types of things. I think we have pushed to create space for us to be more in our authenticity and What I struggle with, even though you may show up with, you know, a changed hairstyle, there's still a manner in which you show up. There's still a tone in the voice. There's still a persona that's created. And I don't do a good job at creating a persona. (laughs) I just don't. I'm very much tell it like it is very much this is my truth and that lands on people in different ways and so one of the biggest lessons i have had this week when i got some feedback saying that i was negative the problem is the person who gave the feedback also loses some credibility because of you know their issues and things and what they have going on but I had to take a step back and think through, have I been allowing my frustration to drive my communication? And the answer is yes. Yes, I have. (laughs) That is 100%. I do not have good things to say right now because as with everyone, right? There's a lot of change happening. There's layoffs happening. What I'm recording right now is two days after the midterm elections, although this episode probably won't come out until after Thanksgiving. But I really struggle with not calling a thing a thing and not calling a spade a spade and and just keeping it 100 about it. And in my mind, I'm just telling the truth. Like, I'm not being, you know, like this just is hopeless, uh, and at least in my mind, but I'm I'm sure I think there is a space where I'm just kind of like, you know what, fuck this shit. (laughs) 
this is some bullshit. Y'all are stupid. This is dumb. This is some bullshit, right? So in saying that, when I when I strip away all the other things, I can see where if someone doesn't know me and they don't know my heart and they don't understand the person I am, then their takeaway is, oh, she's negative. Right? And in the workplace, we have to be extra careful about that. Because you could find yourself in a situation where you're in a meeting with HR and this person is you know, playing back things that you've said. And of course, it puts you in a, a not so great light because you have said all those things, even if they're true. <laughs> I think and I think that's where I have the cognitive disconnect, because if I'm saying something that's true, Even if it's negative, that shouldn't matter. I'm just speaking the truth. That's my mindset. And and people speaking the truth doesn't bother me because I can speak the truth and say, oh, this, you know, company is great at blah, 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 blah. I can also speak the truth and say, this company is trash. These leaders are incompetent. It's clear that they are from the results. Blah, 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 right? I, I can... Like whatever the truth of that situation is, by me speaking it, someone else's perception could be that I'm negative if I'm talking about the not so great things that are true. So that was a great wake up call for me. Because in any other situation I've been in previously at other employers, I definitely would have suffered consequences that I didn't want or wasn't expecting. I think at a certain time and a certain level, when you've built certain relationships, you get more grace to grow and to learn. So I had some uh, great takeaways uh, from that conversation, as painful as the conversation (laughs) was, in my opinion. It's always painful when you have conflict. And it's okay to have conflict. Um, And it's okay for it to be uncomfortable. But what's not okay is not learning and not... um, taking away something tangible that you can grow from and get better going forward, um, whether you stay with the company or not. So that is something I wanted to share with you all because I always talk about, you know, you have to drive your narrative. You have to make sure that the things that are coming out of your mouth marry up to the narrative that you want the organization to have about you. And the problem is we are human. (laughs) And so to a hundred percent of the time, stay calculated in everything you say is mentally and emotionally exhausting. Mm -hmm. However, comma, It is very necessary for you to manage the words coming out of your mouth. And that really goes for everybody. (laughs) But it is very much in particular for Black women because what can happen and what people will try to make happen is they will try to then play on stereotypes of Black women And then they will try to twist the truth. And for the wrong person in the room, that now becomes the new narrative. So there was a time where I had a coworker say, I yelled at them and I cursed them. And it was not true. I do use curse words, clearly, as much as I try not to curse at work. Sometimes 
things slip out because I'm me. But not in anger. Like I never curse in anger or frustration. Like I, I make that a rule because of I know how that could be seen. So when this person tried to make that accusation, you know, I called him on. I said, oh, no, no, no. Because that's, first of all, that's highly disrespectful to cuss out your coworker. But also, <laughs> um, I would never do that because I know I'm a black woman. <laughs> I didn't say that part out loud, but I was thinking it. I was like, I would never do that. And if you don't like any curse words, then one, you should have said that. And two, why did you say curse words to me? <laughs> so, you know, not at me. You didn't curse me, but you also used curse words in my presence. So if you don't like curse words, all of a sudden. So anyway, what I learned was is very important for you to manage the words coming out of your mouth because People will then also take what you said and then try to twist it and make it more than what it is. And if you're in the wrong situation, that could be very detrimental to your career at that junction in that role. And you don't want that because we're here for paychecks. (laughs) That's what we're here for. So anything threatening your paycheck is a threat. And you have to mitigate those threats by managing your narrative and watching the things that come out of your mouth. So it all boils down to what my mama used to tell me all the time. She used to say, you know, your Your mouth mouth is going to get get you in trouble. trouble. (laughs) I mean, I I hear her voice all the time. Okay, keep on. Your Your mouth mouth going to get get you in trouble. trouble. Um, my mouth definitely gets me in trouble a lot and it's something we all need to work on. And it's about building your communication skills. Being a better communicator will only get you more success, more money, more opportunities. Being a better communicator in a world of trash communicators, (laughs) we are all trash communicators uh, we come out the womb not even knowing how to talk. So that that that's the starting point. <laughs> and, and then you try to get better from there. And this is the reason why I'm doing this deep dive into Del Carnegie, how to win friends and influence people. Because at the crux of his book is all these tactics on how to communicate better, how to communicate for impact, how to influence with your communication, that is the million dollar skill that is needed for corporate America. If if you don't know how to do anything else and you know how to communicate with influence and with impact, you will win. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you look like, because part of that is learning how to gain likability and people don't promote people because of their skill set. People promote people because they like them and they want to work with them and they trust them. And that's why they promote people. That's why they hire people. It's likability. It has nothing to do with if you can actually do the job. Hey guys, so we're going to take a little bit of a break just so I can let you know about episode 30. If you're wondering what happened to episode 30, how did it go from 29 to 31? Well, episode 30 is an exclusive episode only for our Patreon members. So if you're interested in all the nuggets I dropped in episode 30, head on over to Patreon slash Trill MBA show and become a Patreon and you will have access to the exclusive episode 30 that just talks about what you need to tell your manager. <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of went off in the episode, but it's okay because I still drop nuggets. So there's a lot of lessons in that episode. So head on over to Patreon and we're going to get back into this fair update that probably abruptly cut off because I didn't plan for an ad. <laughs> back to the show. 
said in a lot of points in your career, as you grow in your career, it is going to be an automatic given based on your previous work experience and the companies that you work for. The assumption is you can do the job. My question is, do I want you to do the job with me? Do I like you? That is what it boils down to. And everybody's like, well, then it's not fair. Life's not fair. None of this shit is fair. You could be the most qualified person and you will never get the job if you're not likable. Period. Point blank. Blood out. And so one thing you need to manage that I'm learning is your likability. And the funny thing is, if you're in an organization or you find yourself in an organization, and this is a lot of organizations out there. In fact, probably all of the organizations I've worked for, because people don't like conflict, they will refrain from giving you their real POV about you that they share with other people. And so they will skin and grin in your face. They will hug you. They'll be like, oh, Felicia. Yeah, I've had that my whole career. But then the things they say behind your back and the narratives they try to create behind you, that's what's detrimental to you. And until you get a, a hold on how to manage that, which is where how to win friends and influence people become so clutch. Because it's giving you tools and helping you figure out how to manage driving your narrative with people. So for me, the first thing is deciding who do I want them to think I am, right? Like, what is the narrative I'm trying to create? What is the persona I'm coming with? Try to make my persona as close to my black ass self as possible. <laughs> I try so hard because that way it's less mental energy and less fakeness and acting that I have to do and have to show up as. I don't want to not be myself. But something Brianna told me and it was very key. She said, "Not everybody deserves you." or the whole version of you. And when she said that to me, it it was like, oh. Because in my mind, I was like, well, they just need to accept me for who I am and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but do they deserve you? It's not about accepting you. It's about there is something wonderful and magical and unique about showing up in your full self that not everybody deserves to get. Because why? Because they won't be a good steward of it. Because they won't be accepting. Because they don't understand the gift that you want to give them. And so you don't need to show up in your full self. So I I created a mantra for myself And I'll share it with you guys. And I've shared it before, but since these are the lessons I'm relearning, (laughs) just always learning the same lesson. Be your most positive self. (sighs) Now, I clearly don't always follow that, right? Because when I get frustrated and I'm an emotional person, I lead with my emotions I care way too deeply about a lot of different things, especially when it comes to work. I care way too much. I care more than I ever should. (laughs) Um, People always look at me and they're like, I don't know how you're going to be rich one day because you care too much. And I'm like, because I'm going to show y'all. I'm going to show. I can show you better than I can tell you. I fundamentally believe that we can care for each other. We can care for the world and still be successful. At my heart, I'm a capitalist, which is why I'm in corporate, but I also care about people. Like I think you will do better and make more money if you put people first 
in the things that you do and you actually care about the people because without the people, you won't have no money. (laughs) So it's counterintuitive to me how many, you know, entrepreneurs, business executives, all, you know, they think it's all about plugging and playing into this game and plugging and playing into the game is part of it. But then when you think about your strategy, you know, sometimes everything isn't what it appears to be. So we've said these mantras, we've made these narratives, we've created these boxes. Like one of the boxes I hate is corporate's cutthroat and, you know, they don't care about anybody. Recently, Meta, also known as Facebook, laid off 11,000 people globally, right? I had several people I know impacted by these layoffs. And, you know, it feels bad. But one thing I understand and know to be true is that corporate is always going to do what corporate does, right? So you have to prepare yourself and be nimble enough to move in and out of these companies. You have to look at them as stepping stones. You can't look at them as places to land because they are never going to really be stable. No company. Everything needs to change and grow. And so when you think about, you know, these boxes of what companies are, how you should be, all these things, I'm telling you, if you stick to what you know to be true in your core values, you will not lose. There will be times where you will get laid off. You have to, because there are times where you mistake that stepping stone as a place to land and stay. And the universe got to shake you up and say, you need to move. And the universe knows you're not going to move unless I do something drastic because you're comfortable. And so you always have to be managing your career two or three steps ahead. Tia, I'll link her show in the notes as well, talked about this. She's always planned for two roles ahead of where she is. And so as you move through corporate, as you grow in each role and at each company, move in ways that are authentic to you while so simultaneously focusing on what is the narrative and persona that you want to drive that will help you move through and up, right? That's the goal. That's what you want to focus on. It really is as simple as reminding yourself at the beginning of the day what your goals are and that every interaction you're having throughout the day is a stepping stone for that goal. And so this is where you need to be a bit calculating and thoughtful and intentional. I say calculating, but it's really thoughtful. Calculating is the sum of thoughtful and intentional. And you need to calculate your moves. You need to calculate what you say. You need to calculate your goals and the steps you're going to take to get there. So you you just got to do the math on the things that you want for your career. The other thing is you really have to work to manage ambiguity. It is so hard. Life is so much easier if somebody just tells you exactly what to do, exactly what they need, exactly what they want. But the problem is people don't know what they need. People don't know what they want. And everybody's just trying to figure it out. And that's okay. That's what you're hired to do. You're hired to figure it out. You're hired to create the plan. You're hired to give the answers, bring solutions do the problem solving. That is why you've been hired. And it doesn't matter at what level you are. Every level, a percentage of your job is that thought leadership. And as you get in higher levels, the higher percentage of your job is about the thought leadership. And 
If you don't recognize that, that is going to be a big roadblock and barrier for you to climb in corporate. And I'm telling you, the switch is not easy. The switch from, think about it, K through 12, the way we've been conditioned in, you know, public education that most of us go through. Some of us are lucky enough to go to private school, but the vast majority of us go to public school. So K through 12, we are taught to show up at a certain time, be certain places at certain times, do certain tasks and under the guise of learning. And then, <laughs> I probably shouldn't say that, but <laughs> that's what it seems like. And then you leave at a certain time and then you come back and do it all again the next day. Right. You may do a little different task. You may be asked different questions. Right. School K through 12 is a training ground for the future workforce. Point blank period. Right. Then you go to university where now you're going to spend another four plus years specializing for these entrepreneurs and business people to hire you so you can make a living. And, and do something we've convinced ourselves we love to do, which is work for other people, right? Because we know the trade-off. Like the flip side is entrepreneurship and that shit is just as hard, <laughs> if not harder. So everybody's not going to want to be an entrepreneur. Great, but everybody got to work. So this is the system we have created And we collectively have created and buy into it. So now my question to you is, how are you going to make this work for you? Right? How are you going to say, okay, I've been conditioned to do this, but how do I feel good in my own skin and make money doing things that I feel good about in my own skin? That's the challenge that we all have, and we've all been conditioned to be good at being this widget. But once you get out of university and you've conquered that part of the challenge of just getting the job, getting somebody to pay you to do something, the way that's set up is you have a manager and your manager tells you what to do. And so for a number of years, you go through your career and you're used to this. And that, and it's comfortable. But at some point, if you're ambitious, you should start realizing and learning that in order to, to grow, you're going to have to become your boss. And then you start realizing, well, what does your boss do? Well, your boss is bringing solutions to problems. And so you have to figure out how to become a person that becomes more of a problem solver and less of an executor. Because it's one thing to come up with the solution to the problem. It's another thing to execute the solution. When you start your career out, you are executing solutions that other people came up with. But as you grow in your career, you should start creating the solutions. And then for a period of time, you'll be creating the solutions and executing them. (laughs) And then after a while, you'll just be creating the solutions and other people that you manage because you'll be solving problems for them so that they can go execute. But in that, you also then need to teach them how to solve problems if they are open to that teaching. Not everybody wants to be a problem solver. Some people just want to do their job. And so that's another lesson, right? Something Brianna told me. She said, you cannot be the manager that you would have wanted You have to be the manager that your direct reports need. I'm still figuring that part out, guys, because I just want to show up like how I would want to show up. And that's that's our natural default. But you can't you're not going to be productive. The other thing I learned is as a people manager, your job is to inspire and motivate regardless of circumstances. Your job is to inspire and motivate the people that work with you. And so part of that is solving problems for them, giving them solutions and telling, giving them direction, giving them clarity, telling them where to go, how to do it, what have you. And so you'll get to a point where you need to hire people that are able to do that. But if you're in a situation where you're 
direct reports aren't equipped to do that, then you have to step up and you have to do that, which makes your job a lot harder. But again, these are the lessons. The quicker you recognize where you are in this, I guess, timeline of career growth, (laughs) the faster you will be able to implement the tactics that will not only help you shine, help your team shine, and thus all of you will rise in the organization. So these are the lessons that I have learned most recently. So I wanted to share that with you guys. If you have any questions or you want to ask me about your particular situation, you can always hit me up at ask at trillionba.com. Now that I am a bit more situated and uh, doing the damn thing, I have opened back up coaching calls. So you can schedule a coaching call at trillmba.com slash coaching. And you will have 45 minutes with me to go through your particular situation. And at the end, you will leave with a very tactical, strategic plan of how to communicate for impact, go into the situation with the right words, the right questions, the right phrasing, so that you can influence way more than you ever thought you could. And then you keep me posted and let me know how it plays out and and we can tweak and adjust as the situation plays itself out. But I guarantee you, every situation has a solution. If you're struggling with something at work, you got a new manager, that manager didn't hire you, they're not giving you a chance. There's a way for you to move to make things better for you. Let's say you are on a PIP or about to be put on a PIP. There's a way around that prior to having to go to attorney Anitra or an attorney. (laughs) Um, There's a way around, you know, I've done everything they've asked of me and they still won't promote me oh, then there's something you're not doing. Let's talk about it. Let's get to the meat and the core of it and figure out what relationships you haven't built that's preventing you from getting the sponsorship you need to get promoted. So there's always a reason and a rationale that a lot of times is bullshit, but it is the reason and rationale. So just because (laughs) you don't agree with it doesn't mean the thing doesn't exist (laughs) or isn't happening in your reality. So we talk about all those things. We break it down. I get you to explain to me your, the relationship and the relationship wall. We've talked about these things in previous episodes and then we poke holes in how do you, you know, patch and repair so you can get what you need to get for your career, right? It's about your best possible outcome. So Excited to start doing more coaching calls um, in the next couple of months. So again, you can ask me a question, ask at trillmba.com. If you send me a listener letter, put listener letter in the subject line. And uh, if we read your listener letter on the show, then you will get a free coaching session. Um, If you need coaching, it is trillmba.com slash coaching to meet with me one-on-one to strategize your specific work situation. All right, guys, wasn't expecting this to be this long. I clearly had a lot to say. I hope this is helpful. And next week, we will dive back into... How to Win Friends and Influence People. We'll finish the last part, part four. Thanks for listening, you guys. Until next time, keep it trill. The Trill NBA Show is a Fair World Corp LLC production. Executive produced by Felicia and Rose Inuha. Sound design and editing by Chris Mann with Pod Shaper. Theme music is Kick Push by Ryan Little. Keep it trill every day, y'all.